today. AMD's new 7900 series drops in price. AMD promises to fix your GPU. Something interesting about the newly announced Ryzen 7000 X 3D parts, and AMD announced the most insane APU on the planet. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. First up for today, I have some great news about GPU pricing, specifically AMD's new 7900 series. In a new report by Video Cards, they found that AMD 7900 XT officially dropped to below MSRP, and not just in the EU. If you remember not long ago, I discussed a similar story in Europe. Don't forget that their MSRP is higher than in the US, and like I said then, it likely has to do with the Euro gaining value against the dollar. But as I also mentioned, if it was selling all that well, GPU makers still wouldn't lower the price, regardless of the euro's value. Well, here we are, as the XFX 7900 XT went on sale for $879 on Newegg. Now, unfortunately, it has since sold out, but I think it's a good sign. Plus, that card in the UK has gone down in price more as well, not to mention the fact that it's been a day since the 4070 Ti was released, and there are still numerous cards that are in stock on Newegg and Amazon. Basically, prices are beginning to drop, and hopefully they won't stop anytime soon. And speaking of AMD's 7900 series, the company officially confirmed the issue that caused their reference 7900 XTX cards to reach high junction temps. But first, start the new year outright by doing something to better yourself, like learning computer science from this video sponsor. Brilliant! The best place to learn computer science, or really any STEM field for that matter, and that's because they were made to teach STEM. So they're the perfect place for math, science, and computer science. The best part about Brilliant Brilliant, though, is how they teach you. Instead of reading how to do something or memorizing formulas, you just do it. And it's actually fun to do because it starts small, yet builds to some really complex subjects. All of a sudden, you find yourself understanding something you never thought you would. And they have something for every level of knowledge, from the basics of computer science to more complex subjects like neural networks or even quantum computing. And what's great is that you can actually try it for free when you visit brilliant.org slash GamerMelt. Plus, the first 200 of you who sign up will get 20% off the annual premium. So don't wait and visit brilliant.org slash GamerMelt today. Now, back to the story, if you remember in a recent video, I went over a report by Der Bauer, who tested multiple GPUs with the junction temp problem, and after multiple tests, he found that the issue boiled down to the vapor chamber. Well, during an interview by PC World with AMD's senior VP and general manager of their Radeon division, Scott Herkelman was asked about the problems, and here was his answer. For the last couple weeks, all we've been doing is focused on what's going on here, and we had three things to look at. One is... Uh, is there a safety concern? There's not a safety concern. We were able to root cause that. Uh, is there a performance uh, potential issue? And what we found is if you throttle at 110 degrees in certain workloads, you would see a small performance delta. And so then we said, okay, we should root cause this. And what is going on? And it all comes down to a small batch of our vapor chambers actually have um, an issue, not enough water, and it's a very small percentage. And so we said, okay, that's the root cause. So yeah, he confirmed that it is in fact the vapor chamber, more specifically that there isn't enough water. Now, he also claimed that it's a very small percentage. But Der Bauer claimed to find 48 cases himself through his audience. Plus, with my short survey on Twitter, 9% of 287 votes claimed to have the issue, which would be around 25. Maybe that is a very small percentage, but only 15% said not at all or that they haven't looked. So we could be looking at just under half of my audience that owns a 7900 XT. Either way, Scott Herkelman claims that if you do have this issue, to contact support from the GPU maker, whether it's AMD or an AIB partner because they have units to replace it and that they know how to check to make sure the card they're sending doesn't have that problem. But according to a report by Igor's lab, AMD is allegedly running out of cards. Apparently they are offering a refund. I'm not sure, but it's at least good to know that AMD is on top of it. And of course, it's important to remember that this only affects their reference designs. Third party cards without that design don't have this problem. Next up, if you saw my last video, you know that AMD recently announced their Ryzen 7000 X 3D chips, along with the fastest gaming CPU out there. And while I'm definitely excited to see what these processors can do, I had a couple questions that have now been answered. 
For one, like the 5800X3D, the 7000X3E parts can't manually overclock. With that said, you can turn on precision boost overdrive and curve optimization, which were not really something well supported on the 5800X3D, minus some potential motherboards that offered it in the BIOS. So that is a bit disappointing, though Ryzen doesn't overclock all that much anyway. The second question I had was in regards to the X3D parts getting the same clocks, yet with lower TDP. Well, we now now know why. Upon a closer look, I noticed that the 7800X3D actually has lower clocks, as well as a higher TDP. It's the other two that have the same clocks and lower TDP, and there's a very good reason for this. Apparently, AMD is using two separate chiplets on the higher-end parts, and only one of those have the 3D stacked V-cache. You can actually see in the die shot that only one of them has the stacked cache. Not only that, but only the chiplet without the 3D V-cache will get up to 5.7 GHz. So these are effectively a hybrid core design. Sort of. Regardless, that's why they can get clocks as high as they can. At the end of the day, I will say that I'm really just excited to see what these chips can do. And lastly for today, while I recently went over Andy's CES and all the products that the company announced, there was one thing that I didn't mention, and that's their new monster APU. It's called the MI300, and while AMD did discuss it a while back, it's finally here. And let's just say it's a beast of a processor. One huge thing is that the MI300 actually uses 3D die stacking to stack 9 5 nanometer chiplets on top of 4 6 nanometer chiplets. And the bottom layer of chiplets aren't just an interposer, they're actually dies with I.O. as well as other functions according to AMD. So this is real 3D die stacking. Those 9 chiplets up top get up to 24 Epic Zen 4 cores and an unspecified amount of cDNA3 GPU cores. And both the CPU and GPU cores have a shared 100 128GB of HBM3 memory. The entire package comes with a shocking 146 billion transistors, making this a powerhouse of an APU. I mean, I thought Intel's Ponte Vecchio with 100 billion transistors was impressive, but this crushes it. What's even better is that AMD shared some performance numbers, and according to them, this gets a whopping 8 times the AI performance when compared to their MI250X GPU, and 5 times the performance per watt. Basically, AMD's new APU you could be a huge issue for NVIDIA. As for release, AMD claims that it's set to come in the second half of this year. So while that does it for today, are you pumped for AMD's upcoming APU or what about their 7000X3D parts? Let me know down in the comments below. And don't forget to try out Brilliant for free at brilliant.org slash And as always, have a great day!